Greetings from Columbia and the Colonial Life Arena on the campus of the University of South Carolina. It is your site for the Class 4A Girls State Championship as the 17 and 5 Bruinettes of Orangeburg Wilkinson High School tangle with the 26 and 3 Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. Hello everybody, I am Birch Antley. This is Emerson Phillips. Emerson, we are in for a treat tonight. This should be a spectacular game for the 4A title. Huge weekend of high school basketball here in Columbia. Dutch Fork has never won a state championship burst. They're 0-3 in title games, losing here in 0-2, 0-3, and 0-5. On the other side, Orangeburg Wilkinson, they have been here before. They've won some titles down in Orangeburg, and they're looking to take another one home here tonight. For the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, Emerson, one reason why they have made it this far to the title game, it's the play in the middle, and that young lady right there, Elena Coates. Elena Coates, six feet, five inches tall, receiving interest from a number of big-name colleges around the country, and she's averaging 18 points and seven rebounds a game. Defender, rebounder, shot blocker, the offense centers around her for Dutch Fork. Yeah, Elena Coates can do it all. She is a spectacular player, but she gets some help as well. Here's the starting lineup from the, for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. Daniels, Robinson, Schuler, an All-State player. She's a senior. Shaw, and of course, Coates, the big center. Well, we talked with head coach Faye Norris. She's in her fourth year coaching the sidelines for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes, and we asked her, hey, what did you tell your team coming into tonight's big title game? Um, talk to them about staying focused, keeping it, um, everything in um, order. Um, don't jump the gun to the end of the game. You always got to play 32 minutes. So those are the things that we talked about. So the big word is focus, focus. Well, on the other side of the court, the Bruinettes of Orangeburg, Wilkinson, Emerson, they are led by a talented player in the middle as well. She's a senior. She is Naila Jameson Myers. Jameson Myers, about six feet, four inches tall, and she'll form what will be a terrific low post matchup tonight against Coates. Jameson Myers is a Clemson Tiger basketball commitment, 14 points and 11 boards per game, and her style is very similar to her counterpart, Coates from Dutch Fork. Yes, and one of the most impressive parts of her game is she can dish the ball out as well, averaging six assists a game. Here are the other starters for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Snipes, Howard, there's Jamison Myers, the 6'4 senior, Johnson and Glover, talented squad for Orangeburg Wilkinson. We caught up with the head coach for the Bruinettes, and that is Joshua Staley in his sixth year on the sidelines for the Orangeburg Wilkinson Bruinettes. We asked him, what did you tell your players coming into this title tilt? We got, we got to go with the same focus we had throughout the entire playoffs. Um, be prepared and not be afraid to enjoy the moment. A lot of times you can not take advantage of the moment. We want to enjoy it. We want to be we're grateful that we're here. And we just want to leave everything on the court. Well, Emerson, and I am certainly looking forward to this Class 4A state championship and especially watching the two talented players for Dutch Fork and for Orangeburg Wilkinson. All of that power in the paint is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, two big schools in Class 4A, schools close in proximity to Columbia, Dutch Fork right outside of the Columbia area in Irmo and Orangeburg about 35, 40 miles down I-26 toward Charleston. Big turnout expected tonight for 4A basketball championship night, the basketball version of the weekend of champions presented by the South Carolina High School League. It's going to be fun. Yeah, we're so glad you could join us here on the SCHSL Network as we are ready for championship basketball here in the capital city of Columbia. Great crowd on hand. The teams are here and ready to tip off for the Class 4A Girls State Championship. Orangeburg Wilkinson winning the lower state championship a week ago in Florence as they knocked off the defending state champs, the Gators of Goose Creek High School. Dutch Fork winning the upper state championship. Keep it right here. This is the SCHSL Network. This is number three. Randy Look at the Burkholder. flip pass. Here comes Lee, Lee. One on one, fire scores from, a, from the acute angle. David Frazier. Championship point, Del Toro. That's it, Cupcuts wins. It is Sanders, Sanders pulling away, showing his speed. For all the best in South Carolina High School League Championship action, both live and on demand, your destination is schsl.tv. We can get a player up here. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream. Camera three. Beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. 
For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the SCHSL network, go to schsl.tv slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. And welcome back to the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, South Carolina. The national anthem in the books. And what a rendition we have right there for you here on the SCHSL Network. And Emerson Phillips, it's almost time for tip-off. Championship night here in Columbia, Birch. In fact, eight championship games on tap this weekend. Two of them tonight, both of them in Class 4A. Lexington and Gaffney boys will follow this matchup tonight, and they will have six title games here at the Colonial Life Arena tomorrow. We'll start it off with 1A girls at 11 o'clock in the morning, and that will run all through the day until the final game of the weekend tomorrow night, the 3A boys championship featuring Hartsville and Southside. Tonight, it's Dutch Fork and Orangeburg Wilkinson for the 4A girls state crown. I mentioned that Dutch Fork has not won a state championship, Burt. They've lost three times in the state finals. In fact, in 2002, they lost to Orangeburg Wilkinson, and that was the last state championship that Orangeburg Wilkinson won. The Lady Bruinettes played here in 2009, but they were beaten by Spring Valley, a team that both these teams have played in the shadow of in the last few years. In fact, OW has got five losses this year. Two of them came to Dutch Fork. Dutch Fort beat OW soundly twice during the regular season, but both those matchups came early in the year. In fact, Dutch Fork beat OW by 49 points in the first meeting between the two this year. So the question tonight becomes, how much has Orangeburg Wilkinson improved? For Dutch Fort, Birch, they have played in the shadow of Spring Valley. They finally got over that hump. They won the region title with Spring Valley this year, and Spring Valley was beaten in the playoffs. So Dutch Fork gets to take his turn here at the Colonial Life Arena. It's going to be a great matchup tonight. Again, we have a huge crowd on hand, and this cl the crowd will grow as we uh, get closer to the start of the boys' game. Lexington and Gaffney, we had about 10,000 here at the Colonial Life Arena two years ago when those two teams met for the state title, and we're expecting possibly an even larger crowd tonight. Yeah, and Emerson talking about the Bruinettes of Orangeburg Wilkinson, 17-5 and five record, but they started peaking at the right time right before the playoffs began. That's when the Bruinettes really gelled. They came together. They found their game. And that's really what you want as a coach is you want your team to peak right at the playoffs and keep that momentum going until you make it right here to the promised land in Columbia playing for a state championship. That's exactly right. Orangeburg Wilkinson started three and four, and they've won 14 of their last 15 ball games to get to the championship game. And, Birds, believe you me, when you play high school basketball in this state, if you're a coach, if you're a fan, if you're a supporter of a high school basketball team, this is what it's all about. You got a chance to make it to the final weekend. You win the upper or lower state championship. You come here as a championship team, and you got a chance to take home the state championship trophy. It is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for all these young ladies. As you see, the Lady Silver Foxes being introduced. They are your upper state champions as they knocked off Lancaster in the first round, JL Mann in the second, Clover in the third and then defeating Dorman 53-46 in the upper state championship. The Bruinettes from OW, the lower state champs, the number one seed in the lower state playoffs. They knocked off Blythewood, West Ashley, Colleton County, and then a big win in Florence as they defeated the defending state champs, the Goose Creek Gators, 
51-43 in a game where Naila Jamison Myers was just outstanding. We we're looking forward to a great matchup between Jamison Myers for Orangeburg Wilkinson and Elena Coates right there on your screen, number 41 for Dutch Fork, two of the best players in the state of South Carolina. Right, it's not often you have a high school basketball matchup featuring two post players six feet four inches tall. In fact, Coates uh, listed at 6'5", Naila Jamison Myers listed at 6'4". Sometimes the heights on the rosters aren't 100% accurate, but in this case, they absolutely are. Two of the premier low post players, not only in South Carolina, but across the country in girls high school basketball. Birch, we have a wealth of young high school basketball talent here in the state of South Carolina. Spring Valley's got a couple of girls committed to play Division I basketball. Uh, Zelina McDaniel headed to North Carolina. Uh, the Dozier gal from Spring Valley will play for the Gamecocks next year. Coates is just a junior tonight for Dutch Fork. You know, we mentioned she's received interest from every, virtually every major women's program in the country. And, of course, uh, Naila Jamison Myers already committed to play basketball next year for the Clemson Tigers. And Naila Jamison Myers, an outstanding student as well. We'll talk about that as we move through the game. And we are underway for the state championship here in Columbia as Dutch Fork controls the tip. Dutch Fork in the white with the green trim for Orangeburg Wilkinson. The orange with the white numerals and letters and those pink sneakers for the Bruinettes. Dutch Fork moving left to right, controlling right now. Rose Robinson, the 5'6 junior. She'll push it off left side to Kiki Daniels. Now Shoal controls. Dutch Fork just working the perimeter. Now a baseline drive underneath. Count it for Rose Robinson, the 5'6 junior, sneaking in along the baseline. Robinson didn't get a lot of headlines, Birch, but she does a lot of little things for Dutch Fork. A terrific ball handler, and you see her ability to score on the first possession of the night. DeJoria Howard, the freshman for Orangeburg Wilkinson, is whistled for the travel. Now Orangeburg Wilkinson, they will start two sophomores and a freshman. As we take a look right here, beautiful baseline play. Took it right by the defender right there and got the easy look for Dutch Fork and Orangeburg Wilkinson with an unforced turnover, a travel call 35 feet from the goal on their first offensive series. So we expect to see some jitters early on, Burts, especially playing here at the home of the Gamecocks, the Colonial Life Arena. It's a big stage for these high school teams. Right wing, Shaw. now top of the key is Daniels. She'll move it right side again as Dutch Fork working the perimeter. This is what they like to do to try to find some open space for Elena Coates. They'll work it into Coates being guarded by Myers, and Coates' shot is off target, but rebound controlled by the Silver Foxes. Now inside to Coates, wide open, and she draws the foul as Jamison Myers came in and got her hand on Elena Coates as she was going up for the shot, so... Coates will go to the free throw line for the first time here tonight. Right, and Orangeburg Wilkinson will have to be leery of staying out of foul trouble. Dutch Fork will pound it inside to Elena Coates. And I would think it's going to take a defensive effort by committee likely for OW as we get a look at Josh Staley, the sixth year head coach from Orangeburg Wilkinson. 155 wins and 67 losses in that tenure for Coach Staley. Staley's a South Carolina product. Birch, he played it Hunter Kiner, Tyler High School. In fact, when he was a student at HKT, he played for Eric Samuels, who is now the head coach at Hartsville High. And Hartsville is here in Columbia. They'll play for the 3A Boys Championship tomorrow evening. Archburg Wilkinson moving it around the perimeter. They'll swing it left side, bottom of your screen. There's a little shot from three feet away. Misses the mark, rebound fought for, and taken down by Dutch Fork. And on the prowl right now, Sidney Shaw. Shaw will kick it right wing, now floating left. Rose Robinson, a little head fake, and she loses the handle as she falls out of bounds. Possession goes to the Bruinettes, who trail the Silver Foxes three to nothing early here in the first period from Columbia. That was interesting. Jam Jamison Myers. Oh, stolen away by Dutch Fork, and the hoop and the harm for Donisha Schuler, the All-State player, averaging 18 points a game, three steals a game, and she just came up with one right there, knocking in the easy shot from the right side, and she drew the foul. So she'll go to the line to try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play, but Emerson, we've got a timeout on the court right now as you look at Faye Norris, head coach in her fourth year for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. 
as Joshua Staley on the other side calling the timeout for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Right now, Dutch Fork really pushing the pace. Right, and you know, so much of the conversation about Dutch Fork centers around Elena Coates, but Danisha Schuler, who made that steal and the driving basket with the foul, an all-state selection in her own right. Birch, only 16 boys and 16 girls from South Carolina make the all-state team. And right here, number 11, Danisha Schuler, pressure defense, made a play on the ball, drew the contact, shielded the basketball with her body to get the three-point chance. Now Schuler, the 5'8 senior to the line to try to convert the old-fashioned three-point play with 5.50 left on the clock here in the first. And that shot will rim out off the backboard. Dutch Fork ratcheting up the pressure. And they almost take it away, and they do. Now they'll pull it back out with Sidney Shaw. So another takeaway by Dutch Fork as they bring that full-court press on the inbounds. Here's a three-point attempt for Shaw. Off the rim and out of bounds to the Silver Foxes. Got a chess match going early here. You know, Dutch Fork has come out a little bit calmer, a little bit more collected, and they have taken advantage of some OW turnovers early on here. But uh, I mentioned it might be a defensive, uh, a defense by committee approach on Elena Coates and Sarkita Glover, number 34 for OW, really banging with Coates when that last shot went up. So they're giving Coates plenty of attention. And give Coates the assist right there. Beautiful pass for Coates as she got it to Schuler underneath the basket, and it is a seven-point Dutch Fork lead now. Orangeburg Wilkinson struggling to keep the ball inbounds, and another takeaway by Dutch Fork. Fast break here for the Silver Foxes, knifing in Daniels, and she draws the foul. This just pressure by Dutch Fork is wreaking havoc on Orangeburg Wilkinson here in the first period. Just good basketball by Elena Coates. We saw it at both ends of the floor on the last bucket. She was doubled in the high post, and she turned, looked low, found a teammate for an easy bucket. And then on the other end, she came up with a steal. And rather than dribble the ball or, or slow down and take her time, she never put the ball on the floor. She passed it ahead to her guard, Kieri Daniels, who forced the action and drew the foul on the other end. Faye Norris has been working with this group for several years, and this is a team that has been in ascendance over the last three years with Elena Coates and Donisha Schuler. Uh, Dutch Fork fans feel like it's about time that they won a state championship in girls basketball. Their fourth state championship game appearance in 11 years, but they've never won it all. And there's a steal by Coates as she intercepts the pass. So Elena Coates doing it all so far here for the Silver Foxes. Daniels on the handle. Now Rose Robinson drifting to the bottom of your screen. Back out to Daniels, drives in baseline. Kicked out of bounds by Orangeburg Wilkinson. Possession remains with the Silver Foxes, and Sidney Scholl will pull the trigger on the inbounds. 4.30 remaining in the first period. Dutch Fork leading 8-0. Silver Foxes work at left side. Shaw, little ball fake. As Orangeburg Wilkinson trying to bring a little defensive pressure of their own here. No shot clock in high school basketball, Bert, so they can take all the time they like on offense. Here's Daniels. Cross court pass is intercepted by Orangeburg Wilkinson. And OW cannot control on the outlet pass, and it's taken away again by Dutch Fork. Shaw moves it over to Robinson. Now they find Schuler underneath. She puts up a shot, and she will draw a foul. Let's uh, check in with our other member of our broadcast team, and that is Mr. Stacy Huff, who's working courtside for us. Stacy, what do you have? Tonight's three-person officiating crew is John Trice, Lee Ann Percival, and Angela R. Latimer. They're making history tonight. First time we've had two women in a three-person crew. First time in the history of the state of South Carolina basketball. It's an accomplishment. Two women out of three. Good job, South Carolina. All right, great stuff there. Stacy Huff. That's wonderful to see right there, Emerson. Yeah, two female officials, part of this three-referee crew tonight. If my... If my understanding is correct, Burks, last year was the first year that we had a female official refereeing one of the state championship games. So this year we have two refs, uh, two-thirds of our crew, female officials tonight, and that's good to see. As Zaria Snipes, the 5'5 sophomore guard, bringing it into front court, draws the foul from Kieri Daniels. And Orangeburg Wilkinson will inbounds. There's a look at Joshua Staley again in his sixth year. 
on the sidelines for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Snipes driving in, has her shot blocked away by, guess who, Elena Coates. Coates can do that. You know, if you're going to drive the lane, you better be very leery of number 41 and white and green. And that blocked shot as we get another look here, Birch. And this is your guard driving in, took it into double team, and Coates waiting on the weak side to come over and spike that ball out of bounds. And she did it right in front of the Dutch Fork students who have crowded behind the goal that Orangeburg Wilkinson is trying to score on. And a real reaction from the Dutch Fork student body on that, uh, on that vicious block by Elena Coates. Snipes on the handle, bottom of your screen. Nabrisha Hughes has checked into this game for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Shot underneath, rebound goes to Elena Coates and then stripped away by Hughes. Hughes launches a three, misses the mark. Rebound is there for Daniels and the Silver Foxes who quickly take it into front court. And there's a travel violation on Rose Robinson. A little yeah. bit out of control by the junior, so a turnover for the Silver Foxes, but they lead 8 to nothing with 3.03 remaining here in the first period. All right, OW's got to settle down at some point here, Birch. You know, we're coming up on moving inside of five minutes gone by now, and they're still scoreless, so you would hope that the pregame jitters have gone away and they can get a look inside. And there is Ritter inside who just checked in. Vondria Ritter, she is a sophomore 6'2", dangerous player. When she comes off the bench, had a great game in the lower state championships, and he, she puts Orangeburg Wilkinson on the board. It is 8-2 with two and a half minutes to play here in the first. Interesting that Coach Staley went to his bench early. He got Vondria Ritter into the game, and she comes in and scores from point blank range. Now a Dutch Fork turnover. No W has got momentum, at least a little bit of it for the first time tonight, but they give it right back. Yeah, Hughes loses it over on the far sideline as Schuler was all over her. So it's Dutch Fork basketball with 2.29 remaining. The lead is six. And Rose Robinson, the junior, averaging four points, will pass it off to Shaw. Now to Coates. Coates being double teamed over there by Ritter and Jamison Myers and picking up the loose ball and putting it in the hole is Donisha Schuler and fouled in the process. She'll go to the line and try to convert on the three point play. Take a look. Right and Coates you know continues to be harassed in the low post but Dutch Fort just a little bit quicker to that loose ball and they were able to put it in from right in front of the goal. Schuler shot rims out but look at her attacking the rebound, the Orangeburg Wilkinson recovers. And coming down near sideline right now is Snipes and Dutch Fork all over her, creating another turnover and takeaway by the Silver Foxes. That defense is just smothering on these Bruinettes right now. The right wing, Shaw wants a three ball, misses off the front iron. Rebound taken in by Dutch Fork. Just inside the three point arc. That is a big shot right there by Rose Robinson. Heck of a jumper by Robinson, the 5'6 junior in Dutch Fork, leading now by 8, 10 to 2. Everything going Dutch Fork's way. You know, they're just out hustling OW. They're getting offensive rebounds and getting to loose balls. There's Ritter inside. She has all of Orangeburg Wilkinson's four points after checking in off the bench. How about Vondria Ritter? Yeah, coming in off the bench with all four uh, OW points here. She's very active in her church. Birch, she's in the church choir, and she's singing a lovely tune so far for these Lady Bruinettes. She had a huge game in the lower state championship victory over Goose Creek coming off the bench, really sparked her team. And when you have her and Jamison Myers out on the court together, an imposing presence. Driving baseline, blocked away by Naila Jamison Myers. She says, hey, don't let Elena Coates take all of the spotlight. I can play this game as well. Right, and she's going to have to be more aggressive defensively. We've seen Dutch Forks guards moving baseline, and you see Jamison Myers get a little bit of uh, a fight in her eye. Burst. that's what I saw on the face of Jamison Myers, a little bit of intensity that we did not see at the opening tip. I think she's getting into this ball game. Daniels launches a three and lands. Kiari Daniels having a heck of a first period here. Under a minute to play in Dutch Fork with their largest lead. It's at nine at 15 to four. As Kiara Mitchell checks in now for Orangeburg Wilkinson, launches a shot, not there. And a rebound out of bounds to Orangeburg Wilkinson. Let's Here's take another look at that three-pointer. Kiari Daniels from the right wing, a big three. You know, Jamison Myers had just blocked a shot and you know, momentum is fickle in the early going. And Dutch Fork able to keep it with that three by Kiari Daniels. 
Mitchell gets the rebound and tosses out to Shade Johnson. And now back over to Mitchell, young sophomore. Now Howard will drive in. Little shuffle pass off her right hand into traffic. Possession arrow remains with Orangeburg Wilkinson, so they will inbounds underneath their own basket here. 15 seconds left on the clock here in the first period. They try to inbounds to Ritter, passes too strong, and here's a fast break by Dutch Fork. Into the hole and put her on the line, Rose Robinson. Wow. What is that, three times now we've had a bucket and a foul for Dutch Fork. They're just getting to the glass. Burst, they're driving to the bucket and they're drawing contact. I think OW could probably make some smarter decisions moving forward if Dutch Fork gets in for a close look. Maybe just back off and let him have the layup rather than commit the foul and give up the three-point play. And she converts. And the lead is now 18 to four. Closing seconds here, the first period. Let's see if Orangeburg Wilkinson can get a shot off. Driving in, no, the buzzer sounds, and that's gonna do it for the first period of action. Dutch Fork leading 18 to four. This is the SC HSL Network. Tyler Ryan here with some Brakes for Less Math. You know, some guys are going to give you a two-wheel brake job. It's going to be about 200 bucks. At Brakes for Less, you get brakes on four wheels for $99. Let me add this up. A $99 four-wheel brake job is twice the work for half the money. That is the kind of math that just makes sense. Brakes for Less is the only way to stop. Brakes for Less, six locations, including Irmo and Lexington. Ladies, come in on Wednesday and get 20% off. Call 254-STOP. This is Regine. Her parents taught her about success and the power of a dream. Regine chose Virginia College for cosmetology and got the skills she needed to start her own client list. Today, Regine owns an award-winning hair salon and helps others realize the power of their dreams. Sometimes, success starts when the lessons that change you help you change the world. Virginia College, your success starts here. Call or visit vc.edu. Unlike a bank, Safe Federal Credit Union never pistol whipped a hermit crab. Unlike a bank, Safe has defeated Chuck Norris in hand to beard combat. Uh, almost. Unlike a bank, Safe smells like chocolate. But most importantly, Safe is not for profit and member owned. So you get lower fees, better rates, more services, and you get to keep more of your money. Unlike a bank. Experience Safe Federal Credit Union where my membership matters. What excites me is the opportunity to take the skills I have and to give back to my community. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. It's about stimulating innovation, even in children that don't think they like math or science. So we get them hands-on, and it's like brains are going. I can almost guarantee you they're thinking way differently about science after we were done with them. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit connectamillionminds.com to find out what you can do. On the Dutch Fork, Silver Foxes fans like what they see here in Columbia as their team leads after one period of play, 18 to four, as we're ready to start the second period. Big first quarter for Dutch Fork. They were able to get inside looks and then that opened them up outside. Uh, Kerry Daniels hit a three, Rose Robinson with a couple of baseline shots and Dutch Fork did everything it wanted to do. Their pressure forced turnovers and it was all Dutch Fork in quarter number one. There's Elena Coates going in strong. Pouring in another bucket in Dutch Fork in the first period. Emerson, one thing they did so very, very well is they really spread the wealth around the court. Sure they did. Rose Robinson, Kerry Daniels, Elena Coates all getting involved offensively. Oh, there's a nice move to the basket there by the freshman, DeJoria Howard, averaging eight points a game, 5'11". Getting her first bucket of the night, and it's a 14-point Dutch Fork lead now, 20 to 6. Driving in baseline, Dutch Fork's Daniels. She'll kick it back outside. Orangeburg Wilkinson almost 
Took it away, but Rose Robinson collects. Birch, if Dutch Fork, or if OW rather, is going to get back in this ball game, it is going to have to start on the defensive end. They cannot give up buckets inside the paint like they did in the first quarter. And, you know, they're going to have to be leery of the kick out for these three-point shots like the one Daniels hit in the first quarter. But uh, if OW is going to come back, it's going to have to start with a series of defensive stops, two, three, four in a row, so that they can get something going on the other end. They work it low to Coates, but she loses it out of bounds. and. Well, she was being guarded closely there by Naila Jamison Myers. That is a good battle to watch, Emerson, away from the basketball. Those two girls are just really going at it in the paint. And they will. You know, that's, that's how it's going to be all night. In fact, OW, I think, has made it a point to be very physical with Elena Coates. But Coates is not phased by that. She's gotten her teammates involved, and she has not tried to do it all herself. Oh, boy, how about that? Zaria Snipes, the young sophomore, showing the ball handling skills and taking it strong to the basket. Little teardrop there, Emerson. Right, you know, a little 6-0 run, a little 8-2 run can put you right back in this game. It's a 32-minute contest. You do not push the panic button if you fall behind big early. And the Orangeburg Wilkinson crowd starting to get into it now as they'll work it in. Elena Coates, too strong off the glass. Rebound is there for Schuler and pulled down by Jamison Myers. That's what Orangeburg Wilkinson needs, the little stops like that, Emerson. Now in transition, driving hard is Howard. Rebound taken in by Shade Johnson. Nice play by Johnson, one of the few offensive rebounds we've seen for OW. Howard wants a three-pointer, gets her own rebound, lays it in to Jamison Myers, who has her shot deflected. But Orangeburg Wilkinson controls. Almost taken away over there by Rose Robinson, and it is a turnover. Let's take another look here. Watch Snipes. Off the window, that's pretty. Started right, then left, and back to the right, and still able to finish with that bank. And only a sophomore, Zaria Snipes. Orangeburg Wilkinson, a young team. And starting lineup, two sophomores and a freshman. Sakita Glover, a junior, the only senior. Naila Jamison Myers taking it into front court. Here is Rose Robinson, She's being checked by Snipes. 5.09 remaining here in the first half. And we've got a foul called on Howard, DeJoria Howard, for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Tough call, Bert. That looked like pretty good defense, but you know it's a bang bang play for the officials, and they have to make a judgment in a split second. Dutch Fork gets the call. 17 fouls on OW, just one on Dutch Fork thus far. So that sends Rose Robinson, the junior, to the line. And her shot is off the mark. So one and one. So Orangeburg Wilkinson, another stop that the Bruinettes were looking for here. Zaria Snipes being checked by Robinson. Snipes, bottom of your screen. Right-handed dribble. Trying to set a play inside to Jamison Myers. She'll scoop it over right side to Sade Johnson. Johnson working baseline, puts up a shot and puts it in. Good move along that baseline there by Sade Johnson, the sophomore. She gets into the box score for this championship game, putting in her first bucket. Just a 10th grader. And Elena Coates being harassed by Vondria Ritter, the 6'2 sophomore. And another stop here for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Check the replay. That's that there bank that, shot. That bank shot by Snipes. That was just a thing of beauty moments ago. And she pulled up off the dribble. We've had a timeout taken here, Burks. 30 second timeout on the floor. It comes with 427 left in the first half. So. All right, well, let's check in again with Coach Joshua Staley, head coach for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Find out what is so special about this year's team. They really persevered. This team's been through a lot of, a, a lot of trials, a lot of tribulations this season, and they didn't let it um, break them. They came closer together. They believed in the coaches, and they worked hard to get to this point. So um, this team has showed a lot of courage, a lot of character to be to this point of the season. That's Coach Joshua Staley, his sixth year on the sidelines for the Bruinettes of Orangeburg-Wilkinson. His team trails right now, Emerson, but 
They have uh, cut this lead to 10. Yeah, and you see Coach Staley has kept a very level-headed demeanor on the sideline. You know, he's not gotten upset. OW fell behind 18 to four. It was 20 to four early in the second quarter, but he's remained calm. So has his team. Johnson going baseline. Shot is not there. The rebound hauled away by Dutch Fork. And almost thrown out of bounds by the Silver Foxes. And there's a turnover. And the OW Bruinettes on the move again. Snipes, top of the key, being checked by Daniels. Orangeburg Wilkinson has put together a nice little run here in the second period. Beautiful little crossover there by Snipes. Shot is not there and taken down by Elena Coates. Now here comes Daniels with numbers, and she throws it out of bounds. So another stop for the Bruinettes. Rare turnover by Kerry Daniels. She had numbers that time, and she was trying to be unselfish. She wanted to get the ball to her teammate, but made an errant pass. So OW is on a six to nothing run. Burst, they got the ball back with a chance to cut it back to single digits. Snipes picks up the screen from Ritter. Snipes drives into the paint. Her shot is knocked away, and Elena Coates and Ritter fighting for the rebound. Possession arrow stays with Orangeburg Wilkinson. Ritter and Glover providing the physicality for OW early on here, and I got to believe that those two young ladies will have to play well the full 32 minutes if OW is going to get back in this thing, but they've recovered nicely after that horrible start. Look at Ritter working inside on Elena Coates, and she picks up the basket. She's got six points coming off the bench, and she's really the one that has sparked this run by Orangeburg Wilkinson. That's right. Uh, OW was scoreless for better than the first five minutes of the game. It was not until they put Ritter in that they got on the board. And look at her on defense right there, banging in with Elena Coates, and she forces a turnover. Snipes drives in. Elena Coates says, get it out of here. Another big block by Elena Coates. Numbers for Dutch Fork. And drawing the foul for Dutch Fork is Shelby Curtis. How about that? Man, this action has gotten fast and furious. There was Ritter with the shot. All right, and that's Ritter just taking what she wants. You know, that's getting position inside and using her body to shield from the block shot. And I've got her with eight points since coming into the ball game here, Birch. That's unofficial. And she but, really has been the spark plug and the catalyst that Coach Staley was looking for. Yeah, and she has gotten this OW crowd. We got a lot of folks wearing orange tonight. This one, you know, behind the OW bench, a lot of folks wearing orange coming in from Orangeburg to support this Bruinettes ball club. And obviously Dutch Fork uh, supported very well here tonight, also being that they're from the greater Columbia area. So uh, the block shot by Coates on the other end, Birch. You know, Snipes hit a couple of shots early and now Coates has gotten wise to her dribble drive. And Coates comes up with a deflection there on the shot by Jamison Myers. Now Shaw drives into the paint, Great feeds pass. left side, beautiful pass there. And the basket is good by Donisha Schuler on a beautiful pass by Sidney Shaw, the sophomore. Almost taken away by Rose Robinson, but Hughes handles it for Orangeburg Wilkinson. And she is bumped out of bounds. Got a foul call here on Dutch. Take a Ford. look at this pass. Never looked at uh, Schuler, did she, Birch? Never looked at Denisha Schuler, but was able to jump and make that two-handed pass. That's a result of a lot of time spent together on a basketball floor. Substitutions now for Orangeburg Wilkinson as Snipes checks back in along with Sade Johnson. Birch, they got a foul on Dutch Fork right there, and that's just the second foul on Dutch Fork. We have eight fouls so far on OW, and I'm here to tell you that some of the Bruinettes fans were getting a little uh, torqued off that uh, the, the, the discrepancy in the number of fouls against OW, so they were happy to see that, that Dutch Fork foul call. There's a turnover by Orangeburg Wilkinson. Sabrina Haynes, or actually I think they're going to call it a, uh, a foul. Let's check in again with Stacy Huff, courtside. Uh, number 15 on your screen there, the center, 6'4 center for Orangeburg, Wilkins, the Bruinettes, Naila Jamison Myers. Not only is she a heck of a basketball player, folks, but she's a great student as well. She has a 4.4 GPA, headed to Clemson to be a Lady Tiger, and she'll major there in health sciences. Naila Jamison Myers. All right, thanks so much, Stacy Huff. Elena Coates on a beautiful feed from Robinson. 
right side banks it in off the square. And Dutch Fork now, after giving up a run to Orangeburg Wilkinson, they're back on track, leading 25 to 12 with a minute and a half remaining here in the first half. Right, and the Dutch Fork guards know that if Coach is single covered, he lob it up for her, let her go get it. Jamison Myers, left-handed shot is not there. And we've got a substitution for Orangeburg Wilkinson is checking back in will be Vondria Ritter. After getting a bit of a break, Vondria Ritter unofficially with eight points. As you see the replay here, nice pass from Robinson to Elena Coates. And I saw Coates Dutch took Ford. one right in the right in the kisser a little bit too there. She Emerson. did. She bumped into the shoulder, I believe, of Jamison Myers. Inadvertent contact. Look at Shaw rip that ball out. Yeah, almost stolen away by Snipes. Shaw just jerked it right out of her hands and then tosses up an eight-footer from the right wing. It's 27-12 now. Dutch Fork under a minute to play. Snipes on the handle. Now Jamison Myers comes out to the perimeter trying to feed Ritter. And Dutch Fork forces another turnover. Here comes Shaw. She'll back away. Wait for her mates. Now Shaw left wing. Finds Elena Coates on a little cutter. Shot is not there. Shaw comes up with a loose ball for the Silver Foxes. Now she'll feed over to Daniels. 30 seconds remaining here in the first half. Beautiful drive by Robinson. A great pass inside. That is how you work the court. Robinson to Schuler. 29 to 12 now. Dutch Fork. 15 seconds remaining. Orangeburg Wilkinson looking for Ritter. She's there. Ritter with double digits right now unofficially. We've got her with 10 after coming off the bench. Five seconds left here in the half. Orangeburg Wilkinson trying to fight for the loose ball. Shaw launches up a three, and there's the buzzer, and that's going to do it for the first half of action here from the Colonial Life Arena as we see Shaw just taking that shot right to the basket, and it is Dutch Fork leading here in this ball game right now. Orangeburg Wilkinson, Emerson, they put up a valiant run. Coach Faye Norris, Coach Norris, hard fall for his half. You have a commanding lead. Talk a little bit about what happened. Um, we started out sharp, um, went down um, sometime and, and, and forgot to run our plays and um, just was careless with the ball. So we got to take care of the ball the second half. Got the box out stronger and we got to watch the Mitch match on the um, hollow. Thank you, Coach Norris. That's Coach Faye Norris winning up big in the first half. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Stacey. We'll take a halftime break. This is the SCHSL Network. Tyler Ryan here with some breaks for less math. You know, some guys are going to give you a two-wheel brake job. It's going to be about 200 bucks. At Breaks for Less, you get brakes on four wheels for $99. Let me add this up. A $99 four-wheel brake job is twice the work for half the money. That is the kind of math that just makes sense. Breaks for Less is the only way to stop. Breaks for Less, six locations, including Irmo and Lexington. Ladies, come in on Wednesday and get 20% off. Call 254-STOP. This is Regine. Her parents taught her about success and the power of a dream. Regine chose Virginia College for cosmetology and got the skills she needed to start her own client list. Today, Regine owns an award-winning hair salon and helps others realize the power of their dreams. Sometimes, success starts when the lessons that change you help you change the world. Virginia College, your success starts here. Call or visit vc.edu. Unlike a bank, Safe Federal Credit Union never pistol whipped a hermit crab. Unlike a bank, Safe has defeated Chuck Norris in hand-to-beard combat. Almost. Unlike a bank, Safe smells like chocolate. But most importantly, Safe is not for profit and member owned. So you get lower fees, better rates, more services, and you get to keep more of your money. Unlike a bank. Experience Safe Federal Credit Union, where my membership matters. What excites me is the opportunity to take the skills I have and to give back to my community. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. It's about stimulating innovation, even in children that don't think 
They like math or science. So we get them hands-on, and it's like brains are going. I can almost guarantee you they're thinking way differently about science after we were done with them. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit ConnectAMillionMinds.com to find out what you can do. Welcome back to Columbia Dutch Fork, leading 29 to 14 over Orangeburg Wilkinson here at halftime. Let's go down courtside and check in again with Stacy Huff. We're here courtside at halftime with the two principals for tonight's team. For OW, we have Greg McCord and for Dutch Fork High School, Greg Morton. A battle of two Gregs. First for Orangeburg Wilkinson High School. Principal McCord, talk a little bit about your school and some exciting things going on there for you. Well, first of all, we're very excited and very fortunate to be here tonight. Uh, we're very thankful to have our community supporting us. And some of the good things we have going on at Orangeburg Wilkinson High School and manifested itself tonight here with our athletic team performing in the state championship. We have a lot going on academically, and our students are having a great time this week. And this is really big for our community. And once again, we're just excited about being here. You guys came out in force, uh, Greg. Yes, yes. Uh, one of the things I'm most proud of is that the community did come out. Uh, we started out with ticket sales kind of slow, and all of a sudden they came out like gangbusters. And this is an exciting time for everyone. We're very proud of our girls. All right, now for Dutch Fork, another Greg. Two Gregs, two Gs with you, I believe. Uh, Greg Morton. Principal Morton, talk a little bit about what's exciting for your school right now. Well, first of all, these girls tonight are uh, showing what they can do on the court, and we're very excited about that. It, it displays our uh, great athletic program that we have at Dutch Fork. Uh, I like to call us the trifecta of high schools. We got a great uh, academic program, our arts program. So all in all, we just got a great high school out there, and we're very proud of all our students and our community that come out tonight to support us. It's like a home game almost for you guys. You came across town. Big turnout for your school as well. Sure is. By 12 noon today, we were sold out of tickets at our school. So uh, we, you know, we, we knew we were going to have a big turnout. Our students have been supporting uh, these girls all year long, and uh, we're hoping to take it home tonight. Speaking of taking it home tonight, guys, any predictions? What's going to happen in the second half? Uh, Orangeburg Wilson High School is coming out real strong. We're going to take it home for our fans tonight. 601 Bruin Parkway. You say the opposite, right? I told my girls you better play four quarters tonight because I, I heard they were going to come out and uh, play hard, and you never know. Okay. You never know, and, so they got to keep it up. And that's what's happening. It's a big game. Y'all got a lot of ground to make up. Let's take it back to Birch and Emerson. All right, thanks so much, Stacey Huff. Great stuff, as always. Keep it right here. We'll be back with more action here on the SC HSL Network. Tyler Ryan here with some breaks for less math. You know, some guys are going to give you a two-wheel brake job. It's going to be about 200 bucks. At Breaks for Less, you get brakes on four wheels for $99. Let me add this up. A $99 four-wheel brake job is twice the work for half the money. That is the kind of math that just makes sense. Breaks for Less is the only way to stop. Breaks for Less, six locations, including Irmo and Lexington. Ladies, come in on Wednesday and get 20% off. Call 254-STOP. This is Regine. Her parents taught her about success and the power of a dream. Regine chose Virginia College for cosmetology and got the skills she needed to start her own client list. Today, Regine owns an award-winning hair salon and helps others realize the power of their dreams. Sometimes, success starts when the lessons that change you help you change the world. Virginia College, your success starts here. Call or visit vc.edu. Unlike a bank, Safe Federal Credit Union never pistol whipped a hermit crab. Unlike a bank, Safe has defeated Chuck Norris in hand to beard combat. Almost. Unlike a bank, Safe smells like chocolate. But most importantly, Safe is not for profit and member owned, so you get lower fees, better rates, more services, and you get to keep more of your money. Unlike a bank. Experience Safe Federal Credit Union, where my membership matters. What excites me is the opportunity to take the skills I have and to give back to my community. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. It's about stimulating innovation, even in children that don't think they like math or science. So we get them hands-on, and it's like brains are going. I can almost guarantee you they're thinking way differently about science after we were done with them. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit ConnectAMillionMinds.com to find out what you can do. Welcome back to the Colonial Life Arena here on the campus of the University of South Carolina in the capital city of Columbia. Birch, Antley, and Emerson Phillips with you. Dutch Fork leading 29 to 14. And uh, Emerson, I'll tell you, 
Dutch Fork started out like gangbusters, and then Orangeburg Wilkinson made a nice little run. But as we closed out the first half, Dutch Fork really took control again. Right, Dutch Fork led 18 to four at the end of the first quarter. Orangeburg Wilkinson was able to put together a six to nothing run in the middle of the second quarter, but then Dutch Fork closed the quarter with a nine to four run. So it ends up being an 11 to 10 Dutch Fork advantage in the second quarter. So their lead is 15 here at halftime. Baseline move. This is Rose Robinson, who I thought played particularly well in the first half. Coach, not a huge presence offensively with only five points, but uh, this young lady for Orangeburg Wilkinson was. That was uh, Ron Vondria Ritter. And we got uh, Howard with a bucket there as well. Let's check right. in with Stacy Huff. Yeah, let's go down to Stacy. Here we're here, Coach Josh Staley. Coach, a trail by 15. What can we expect from the Bruin Nets in the second half? He's gotta, we got to pick up the intensity, try to make a run, play good defense, limiting them one shot per possession. All right, all right, Coach. Good luck in the second half. It's Coach Joshua Staley, Orangeburg W. Bruin Nets, back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Stacey. Uh, yeah, Joshua Staley joining us there. We're going to take one more timeout. We'll come back with a second half tip off when we return to Columbia and the SC HSL Network. What excites me is the opportunity to take the skills I have and to give back to my community. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. It's about stimulating innovation, even in children that don't think they like math or science. So we get them hands on and it's like brains are going. I can almost guarantee you they're thinking way differently about science after we were done with them. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit connectamillionminds.com to find out what you can do. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. My name is Paul. I work for Time Warner Cable as a network engineer. Working with Connect Moon Minds, uh, I've gotten to see how the minds of a lot of young people work. It's watching the light bulb come on, and you, you really understand that, that that child just had a spark go off, and you helped create that spark. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit connectamillionminds.com to find out what you can do. We're back in Columbia running for the start of the second half. Dutch Fork leading by 15, 29 to 14. At one point in the first half, the Bruinettes had cut that Dutch Fork lead to single digits, but Elena Coates and Danisha Schuler really uh, ratcheted up the pressure in the final minutes of the first half. And put an end to that Orangeburg Wilkinson run. Right, uh, I believe turnovers, points off of turnovers, particularly the difference in that first half and especially in the first quarter. You know, we saw Dutch Fork creating turnovers with their defense and uh, Orangeburg Wilkinson having some ball handling issues, maybe not some of the sharpest passes. And, you know, an opportunistic team like Dutch Fork is going to feast on you if you do not take care of the basketball. And that's what we saw, particularly in quarter number one. Points off a of turnover is the real difference in this game to this point. So here we are with a 15-point margin. How is OW going to get back in the game? Well, number one, they're going to have to eliminate turnovers, and they better start creating some of their own. Uh, short of that, I think we'll be looking at a Dutch Fork state championship for the first time ever in girls high school basketball but still a lot of action left here Berg 16 minutes to play the Dutch Fork moving right to left now in the white uniforms of the green trim Orangeburg Wilkinson in the orange with the pink shoes there's Elena Coates top of your screen on the outside swings it over to Daniels now bottom of your screen to Shaw. Shaw will drive into the paint passes off to Schuler, and that shot is knocked away by Jamison Myers terrific defensive play by Jamison Myers she realized at halftime that she has got to do a better job defending the interior when these guards for Dutch Fork penetrate I'm sure coach Staley asked Jamison Myers to block some shots and to become more of a defensive presence so Great to see that for OW. Like I said, they're going to have to do more of that if they're going to get back in this game. Travel violation called on Orangeburg Wilkinson and the freshman DeJoria Howard. So a turnover there for Orangeburg Wilkinson, Emerson. And you know, Coach Joshua Studley, like you have said, he wants to eliminate these turnovers here in the second half. Yeah, got to be double-digit turnovers already for OW. Oh, boy, high shot, marking shot there by Rose Robinson. Rose Robinson has not gotten a lot of 
credit this year. I'm sure she would get plenty from Coach Faye Norris. But Robinson, the floor general for this team, and they've got so many good guards with Schuler and Kerry Daniels. They do a lot of good things, but Robinson really one of the unsung heroes of this team. Stepping into the passing lane, Elena Coates to intercept that pass, which was intended for Jamison Myers. As Myers comes down the court a little out of control, but Robinson hangs on to it for Dutch Fort. Rose Robinson, a little ball fake. Now she'll drift out the right side. Good defense by Snipes. Robinson wanted a dribble drive, didn't have it. Three-point attempt, not there. Rebound taken away by Orangeburg Wilkinson and Shade Johnson. She loses it, but out of bounds to the Bruinettes off the foot of a Silver Fox. Shade Johnson's played well also. The 10th grader, number 23 from OW, hit a couple of shots in the first half and has had some presence rebounding and doing some other things. And, you know, it's... I'm still waiting for Orangeburg Wilkinson to try to establish Jamison Myers in the low post. Uh, Coates and this Dutch Fork team have made life difficult on Jamison Myers, who is now out of the game. She just left the game. Skip pass into Ritter. She can't handle it. Ritter fighting for the loose ball. And we've got a whistle and a foul. Yeah, the dominant post player so far for Orangeburg Wilkinson has been Ritter, the sophomore, coming in off the bench. Jamison Myers has just you know, had a tough time trying to find an open look as right. she is being guarded very closely by Elena Coates, the 6'5 junior for Dutch Fort. Yeah, you know, I wondered if OW might go big at some point and put Jamison Myers, Ritter, and Glover into the game together and go with a bigger, stronger lineup. But they have not uh, chosen to do that to this point. I think they give up a lot of quickness if they go big like that. And Dutch Fork, obviously, one of the fastest, quickest girls teams in South Carolina. Long outlet pass ahead to Schuler. Schuler now to Shaw. And Shaw shot off the mark. And rebound collected by Orangeburg Wilkinson, but she stepped out of bounds. That was Kiera Mitchell who. Brought down the rebound, but stepped out of bounds, so it's Dutch Fork basketball. Rose Robinson working on Mitchell. Robinson drives in baseline. Elena Coates is there for the rebound and the putback. Elena Coates with her seventh point of this ball game. She had five in the first half. So many different ways she can hurt you. This play obviously not even designed for her. Robinson drove it in. Coates uh, offensive rebounding with the stick back off the glass. Snipes inside to Ritter. Ritter, little turn and a left-handed leaner, and she's got it in on Elena Coates. And we've got Ritter with 12 points, a quick steal by Orangeburg Wilkinson. Shot is not there, and Dutch Fork controls. Quickly ahead to Coates. Coates puts it in. Oh, a Schuller. nice little feed there from Schuler. Yeah, Schuler was looking for her teammate. She knew she'd be there on the left side of the bucket, and that's a high percentage look for Dutch Fork. Coming after O.W. had created a steal, but were not able to hit their shot. Try to feed Ritter again. The pass too tough to handle, so Dutch Fort comes away with it. And here is Rose Robinson again. And she's going to be checked by Nabrisha Hughes, who just recently checked into the ball game. Schuler driving the lane. Ritter is there. They say she got a piece of her. Count the basket. Put her on the line. For Donisha Schuler, this is the second time in this ball game that Schuler is going to the line to try to compete an old-fashioned three-point play. I've counted four times tonight as we get a look at that uh, window work by Vondrea Ritter, who's played terrific off the bench for OW. But another basket and a foul. You know, if I'm Coach Staley, I'm going to take a timeout. I'm going to say, look, if we're going to foul these people driving a basket, let's send them to the floor and make sure that they do not get a shot up. If you're going to commit the foul, you can't give up the basket. If you're going to allow the basket, it, just back away and don't commit the foul. Free throw splashes out. Taken down by Orangeburg Wilkinson. Dutch Fork leading 37 to 16. Oh, baseline drive and she stepped out of bounds. Stepped out. Good defense by Dutch Fork, but another turnover by OW. They have not placed enough of a premium on taking care of the basketball to this point. That's why they're down 21. Long outlet pass to Schuler, and she goes for the layup. This is it. Now another chance for Schuler. Beautiful. That good. Beautiful basketball. Schuler to Robinson, back to Schuler, and they smiling and high fiving on the way back down the floor. Great unselfish basketball. Yeah, and Rose Robinson, she looks like she is just having 
a heck of a time out there. Her team obviously has the lead, but that young lady is always all smiles every time you see her going down the court. Rose Robinson, they say that she's a little bit of a talker, that kind of a the jokester of the team, Rose Robinson, really keeps the spirits lifted for the Silver Foxes. The lead right now, 39-16, as Orangeburg Wilkinson inbounds. Jamison Myers, her shot too strong, and rebound taken by Rose Robinson. A 10-2 Dutch Fort run to open the third quarter. Robinson, left-handed dribble. A little pass intended for Elena Coates is knocked away. Good hustle by Nebrisha Hughes. Getting ready to check in for the first time in this ball game. Audra Snipe over at the scorer's table for Dutch Fork. And now the 6-2 senior will step onto the court for the first time in this championship. Rose Robinson will go to the bench for a breather. So a taller lineup on the floor now for Faye Norris and Dutch Fork. Let's see what Orangeburg Wilkinson will do. Three-point attempt not there. Jamison Myers with the rebound. The putback, no. Elena Coates. Snatches it down. Schuler over to Schull now into the front court. Schull, right side of your screen over to Schuler. And Elena Coates steps out. Under three minutes to play here in the third period. Elena Coates, her shot misses the mark, and Jamison Myers flies in for the rebound. Now Snipes, Snipes quickly up ahead to Hughes. Hughes puts it up, no. Snipes is there for the rebound and she draws the foul as she hits the floor hard. Picks herself up, dusts herself off and will go to the line with her team trailing 39 to 16. And Orangeburg Wilkinson can ill afford to leave any points here on this free throw line, Emerson. Yeah, they really need to convert. Uh... That was Snipe from Dutch Fork fouling Snipes from OW. And this is Zaria Snipes up at the foul line here, the point guard from Orangeburg, Wilkinson, Birch. Uh, you know, we knew it would be a tall order for Orangeburg, Wilkinson tonight as we check out the Dutch Fork students. We mentioned earlier three times Dutch Fork has lost in the state finals, and they are looking to pick up their first state championship in girls basketball tonight. And I mentioned earlier that Dutch Fork had beaten OW twice early in the season, both times by wide margins. Beat them by 49 the first time and by 22 the second meeting. So you know, we knew OW was in for a, a real tough fight tonight. And again, that home run pass from Elena Coates to Schuler works again on the long outlet. That's twice. Coates and Schuler have burned Orangeburg Wilkinson on the deep pass. Great pass Inside, yeah. Jamison Myers, that was a beautiful pass from Snipes. And Jamison Myers in perfect position. Drive, draw, and dish. Snipes to Jamison Myers. 41 to 18 now in favor of the Silver Foxes. Six minutes gone by in the third. 12 to four, Dutch Fork has outscored OW here in the third. And late in the second period, you know, Orangeburg Wilkinson had cut this lead, the single digits. They had cut the lead down to nine, but then it's been all Silver Foxes since. Beautiful ball movement for Dutch Fork. As Robinson back in the game, They'll toss it out to Shaw. And a collision there as Shade Johnson was going for the pickpocket. Yeah, aggressive play by Johnson, and why not? At this point, you know, 41-18, the score. I think Chardé may have glanced at the scoreboard and said, hey, we got to get something going. And like I said earlier, Birch has got to start on the defensive end. So Johnson tried to jump a, a passing lane, created some contact, committed a foul in doing so. But, you know, OW has got to get more aggressive. They're running out of time. Shaw on the inbounds, taken away by Ritter. Ritter all the way in. Shot is not there, and Snipe comes down with a rebound for Dutch Fork. That's where the, these tall girls from Dutch Fork, their presence is always felt, even though you know they may not be in position to get a block. Just their presence, the fact that the ball handler knows they're behind them or near them, makes them be cognizant of the fact that the shot could be blocked, and that's what uh, you end up with seeing. You know, a shot from point blank range by Ritter, a shot she's going to make 
nine times out of ten, but not necessarily with Audra Snipe listed at 6'2", right behind her. Howard wants a three-pointer. Bang! She got it. Dejoria Howard fresh into this ball game. Ninth grader, first three of the game for Orangeburg Wilkinson. They're going to need a few more of those. That was a big-time shot by Howard as Robinson takes it into front court, being checked by Snipe. Robinson, left-handed dribble. Gives off to Shaw, drifting to the top of your screen. Shaw kicks it out to Daniels. Dutch Fork leading by 20. Here in the third period, 30 seconds remaining. Snipe on the outside for Dutch Fork. Takes a look, thinks about it, and then dishes off to Shaw. Just a motion offense here to run, what, the last 50 seconds of the third quarter down. Smart move by Dutch Fork. Yeah, Faye Norris saying, let's slow down the pace right now. Slow it down. We've got a comfortable lead. Robinson picks up the screen. Little teardrop not there. Rebound to Shaw. Her shot, no. And Ritter brings it down for Orangeburg Wilkinson, and that's going to be it for the third period as the buzzer sounds. And it is all Dutch Fork. They lead 41 to 21. This is the SC HSL Network. Tyler Ryan here with some brakes for less math. You know, some guys are going to give you a two-wheel brake job. It's going to be about 200 bucks. At Brakes for Less, you get brakes on four wheels for $99. Let me add this up. A $99 four-wheel brake job is twice the work for half the money. That is the kind of math that just makes sense. Brakes for Less is the only way to stop. Brakes for Less, six locations, including Irmo and Lexington. Ladies, come in on Wednesday and get 20% off. Call 254-STOP. This is Regine. Her parents taught her about success and the power of a dream. Regine chose Virginia College for cosmetology and got the skills she needed to start her own client list. Today, Regine owns an award-winning hair salon and helps others realize the power of their dreams. Sometimes, success starts when the lessons that change you help you change the world. Virginia College, your success starts here. Call or visit vc.edu. Unlike a bank, Safe Federal Credit Union never pistol whipped a hermit crab. Unlike a bank, Safe has defeated Chuck Norris in hand to beard combat. Uh, almost. Unlike a bank, Safe smells like chocolate. But most importantly, Safe is not for profit and member owned. So you get lower fees, better rates, more services, and you get to keep more of your money. Unlike a bank. Experience Safe Federal Credit Union where my membership matters. What excites me is the opportunity to take the skills I have and to give back to my community. I care about sparking an interest in science, technology, engineering, and math with the children of today. It's about stimulating innovation, even in children that don't think they like math or science. So we get them hands-on, and it's like brains are going. I can almost guarantee you they're thinking way differently about science after we were done with them. Time Warner Cable employees are inspiring the next generation of problem solvers. Visit connectamillionminds.com to find out what you can do. We're back in Columbia ready for the final stanza. As the fourth period is underway with Dutch Fork leading 41 to 21 and Dutch Fork, Emerson Phillips being paced by their All-State senior Donisha Schuler with 19 points in this ball game. Ritter with 10, the leading scorer for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Clearly the OW defensive game plan has been to try to limit the opportunities for Elena Coates and when she has been doubled in the post, she has found her teammates and Schuler has benefited from that. Donisha Schuler has been outstanding all year. In fact, throughout her Dutch Fork career, she's playing her final game as a Silver Fox tonight. She's a senior, 18 points, seven boards a ball game. One of the top 16 players in South Carolina this year. And it looks like barring a huge fourth quarter rally, these Dutch Fork seniors are gonna wrap up their career with a state championship win. Schuler will kick it out to Robinson. Now back over to Daniels, who's had a very strong game as well here for Dutch Fork. You know, Mark poured in nine points. You know, I said the Dutch Fork seniors, there's only two of them, Schuler and Audra Snipe. Yeah, Dutch Fork, a young team as well. We talked about the youth 
on the roster for Orangeburg Wilkinson, but Faye Norris has some young players as well. As Dutch Fork slowing down the pace now, trying to, to work this clock as much as possible as we're just underway here in the fourth and final period of action from the 4A Girls State Championship in Columbia here on the SCHSL Network. Remember, for both live streaming and on-demand coverage of all the South Carolina High School League championships, log on to schsl.tv. There's another bucket by Donisha Schuler right underneath the basket and a beautiful pass from Robinson. Robinson dropping the dime down to Schuler. We've seen that combination a couple of times tonight. Right wing for Howard, who hit a three-pointer back in the third. Decides against taking a shot there, and that pass is going to be thrown out of bounds as Hughes was looking for Mitchell on the cut. Let's take another look at this. Robinson driving in. That's just a beautiful little pass there by Robinson to Donisha Schuler. You can tell that these Dutch Fork players spend a lot of time together, Emerson. And such a subtle pass with the left hand. She drew the double team and just flipped it ever so lightly with that left hand. Little touch pass really is all it was. Robinson, I'm telling you, the more I watch Dutch Fork play, the more impressed I am with her. Takeaway by Orangeburg Wilkinson as Howard takes it into front court. And she has her pocket picked by Robinson. Now here comes Rose Robinson looking for Schuler. And that pass is out of bounds, but I think we might have a foul whistled on an Orangeburg Wilkinson player. It looks like we do. Yeah, Robinson and Schuler got their own two-man game going right now, Birch. And Robinson knows that Schuler's a scorer. She knows her senior teammate is an all-state player. And Robinson's job is to distribute the basketball to Coates and Schuler. And she has done that many times tonight. An outstanding performance by this Dutch Fort girls team that is in command. Birch, Dutch Fort jumped out to an eight to nothing lead tonight and they have not trailed in this ball game. They led 18 to four at the end of the first quarter, their largest lead of the night. Right now, 44 to 21. And Schuler knocks down the front end and bangs in the second shot as well. Schuler leading all scores. And she had 19 coming in, and there is a big steal, and to the hole goes Donisha Schuler, having a heck of a ball game for the senior. And her moment to shine here on the big stage, the state championship game. And she has over 20 points to lead all scores. Five minutes remaining, and it's all Dutch Fork right now, 27-21. You know, Schuler's a great defender, and I really think she likes this broken court type of game. I think we've seen several uh, instances tonight where OW's turned the ball over and Dutch Fork has had numbers. Schuler likes to run the floor. A very complete player. She has played outstanding tonight, and what a great way to cap off your high school career. Birch, you've worked hard. You know, since eighth or ninth grade, you've been playing on your school's basketball teams. You practice every day. You've got to maintain your GPA. Uh, you play AAU circuit or AAU ball in the summer, and you start practicing in the fall. It goes all the way into the winter and into the early part of the spring. And if you're good enough, you get a chance to play here at the Colonial Life Arena. And for Dunisha Schuler, what a terrific way to enter. Look at her. There's right another there. bucket. Just going right <laughs> into the land of the trees, right in the paint, taking the feed from Elena Coates. And a beautiful pass there from Coates as well. But Schuler is just having a career game here tonight. There's a nice move to the basket by Glover, who Hit a shot for Orangeburg Wilkinson on their last trip down. That's four consecutive points for Sarkita Glover, the junior who had been quiet up until this point. So that is something that Coach Joshua Staley enjoys seeing is his junior Sarkita Glover getting in and making some effort. Well, we talked with Coach Faye Norris to find out what's so special about this year's Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. The, the best thing is, is more experience. Um, most of them came to me young, so they've been there three, um, four years. And um, so it's, it brought in a lot of leadership this year. Um, a lot of, they know exactly what the coach want. Um, so 
and hadn't been a lot of, um, hadn't do, had to do a lot of, a great deal of, of coaching on the sideline, just pointing out a few things. So experience was, was the key this year. There's Faye Norris. She is just always even keeled. Big bucket there by Audra Snipe. Her first points of the game for the other senior for Dutch Fort. I like Coach Norris. Uh, Birch, you know, I feel like she's just got a real presence, and I think she's a role model for the young ladies at Dutch Fork. And, you know, she's very well, very reserved, very mild mannered, just like uh, Josh Staley. Let's talk with Stacey Huff. Look at him. We're here at courtside with Commissioner of the High School League, Jerome Singleton. Mr. Singleton, big weekend, big turnout tonight. Absolutely. And if you look around, you see the big crowd, a lot of support from the community, a lot of support from our schools. Uh, I'm very pleased. Next game coming up. We've got another big one coming up. It's going to get even more packed in here. Oh, no doubt. And I, well, we've got Gaffney and Lexington coming in. They're both supporting the schools very well. A lot of supporters. But the, tomorrow's going to be just as big. It's a whole big weekend for us. Talk about the positive impact the high school league has in developing these young athletes. Well, we hope that we play a role. You know, again, we don't offer this sport for scholarship. We don't offer it for who can go to the pros. We don't even really offer it for championship. We offer it for participation, those lessons that those kids can learn while competing. And that's what we're all about. Exactly. Another big day tomorrow. Six more games tomorrow. Looking forward to it. That's the commissioner of the high school league, Jerome Singleton. Back to you guys. All right, thanks so much, Stacey. Jerome Singleton, hats off to the South Carolina High School League. Jerome and his staff always doing an outstanding job. And we are so thankful to have Jerome representing the state of South Carolina and the South Carolina High School League. Here's Shaw on the give and go, and she is going to be fouled. I believe that's going to be Nabrisha Hughes coming in on the back of Shaw. The lead right now, Dutch Fort. All over Orangeburg Wilkinson, 52 to 25. You know they started out this ball game on a 9-0 run, and really never looked back. Yeah, it's been all Dutch Fork tonight. We hate that it hadn't been a little bit closer, more competitive ball game. But Dutch Fork is just that good. 26 and three coming in. They were winners of 10 straight coming into this matchup. And Birch, you know, I want to take a moment before we get down to the final minute or so here and begin the Dutch Fork celebration. You know, we always look forward to talking about who's on the all-hair team for the weekend of champions. And this year in 2012, I've got two young ladies from this game, 32, Vondrea Ritter from Orangeburg Wilkinson, and I've also got number 10, Rose Robinson from Dutch Fork on the all-hair team, which we'll be talking more about as we move through the weekend. Always a fan favorite here on the SCHSL Network is Robinson, one of your teammate right here as she is going to dish it off to Daniels and now back to Schuler. Schuler back over to Daniels with three minutes remaining here in this championship game. 54 25 Dutch Fork leading just under three to play. There's Daniels driving in as she found the crease but Ritter is there to knock it away and bring down the rebound for Orangeburg Wilkinson, Vondrea Ritter, the 6'2 sophomore who has been the leading scorer for Orangeburg Wilkinson. She came off the bench and she has poured in 12 points here in this game tonight. Birch, uh, the all hair team, you know, you go with something different, something that allows you to stand out. We like young people to express themselves. I like it when they do it with their hair. So we got this young lady right here, Vondrea Ritter. Uh, her hair, however, has not been the story tonight. Ritter has been the bright spot this evening for this OW girls team. But I got her on the all-hair team. I also have Orangeburg Wilkinson's number zero, Zaria Snipes, and number 10 from Dutch Fork right there, Rose Robinson going with the Braves. And boy, Rose has had a heck of a ball game here tonight as well. She and Elena Coates and especially Donisha Schuler, who's on the handle right now, number 11, bottom of your screen for Dutch Fork. It will feed over to Robinson. Robinson being checked by Hughes for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Just over two minutes to play as Robinson drives in. High arcing shot, misses the mark. The rebound is collected by Zaria Snipes, the 5'5 sophomore for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Orangeburg Wilkinson has just struggled to try to get their star player 
Jamison Myers active into this ball game, especially on offense. She just has not had very many good looks. There's Ritter going in. She has had a heck of a ball game. Only a sophomore of Andrea Ritter, 6'2", sophomore for Joshua Staley's Bruinettes. Yeah, and I haven't got the official stats, Birch, but I think uh, she's got 14. Probably the only, game. probably the only OW player in W figures. You got her with 14. That's more than half of OW's points. And a timeout here by Faye Norris, and a chance for Dutch Fork to sort of soak it in here. And maybe she'll put some of her younger players into the game, or in all likelihood, she'll keep her seniors out there to let them finish out this championship game. Well, let's check in again with Coach Faye Norsey. What it is that you like so much about coaching high school basketball? Um, lifetime experiences. Um, the thing is that, you know, you're in a basketball game, you got to make those quick decisions, whether right or wrong. And um, it just, to me, the game of basketball is like lifetime experiences. So. That's, that's what I, I tell them. I say, you know, you got to make that decision. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. Then you got to live with what the decisions that you've made. So, lifetime experiences. That's great stuff right there from head coach Faye Norris. She's yeah. been in that position there for four years over at Dutch Fork and gunning for the first state championship in school history. Emerson, that's a big achievement. Nice jumper there by Kyla Wigfall, the junior who just checked into the game. That was a smooth looking shot for Dutch Fork. And actually that was Shelby Curtis, the senior. Need to give the senior some credit for coming onto this court and immediately dropping in the beautiful jump shot right there. So all the seniors for Dutch Fork have checked in and they have made their way into the box score. Right. Audra Snap, Snipe with points. And now Shelby Curtis, and we all know what Donisha Schuler has been doing. All right, three seniors on this Dutch Fork team, Curtis, Schuler, and Snipe, and that's why Coach Norris called that timeout. She wanted to get her senior, Shelby Curtis, off the bench and into the game and let her wrap up her high school career playing uh, the closing minutes of the state championship game. What a thrill that must be. A minute, nine seconds remaining. Getting a freshman into the game here also, Birch. This is uh, Jarne Green. Ninth grader at the line here for Dutch Fork, and that Dutch Fork bench will erupt in about a minute and nine seconds. Uh, John A. Green, the 5'8 freshman, misses the second rebound, taken in by Orangeburg Wilkinson and Kiera Mitchell, the sophomore, who takes it into front court, launches a three pointer, and that is out of bounds to Dutch Fork. 59 seconds remaining. Here at the Colonial Life Arena in Columbia, it is all Dutch Fork, 57 to 20, 29. Remember, you can get a DVD of this championship. Check out schsl.tv. Also available, the upper and lower state finals from last weekend, as well as the girls and boys sports championships. That's schsl.tv. Check out our great DVD library. You know you'll want to have this one in your collection. There's a beautiful bucket by the freshman Green with under a minute to play. Might be getting a look at the future here for Dutch Fork High School basketball. They do have quality juniors and sophomores on this team that will be back next year. And maybe Jarnay Green will become a more prominent player for Coach Faye Norris as we look to the future. Yeah, and Orangeburg Wilkinson Young as well. Joshua Staley will have some talented players back for the Bruinettes next year. And I know this is a tough loss for the Bruinettes to swallow, but they had a heck of a season. And only two teams can make it here to the state championship, and they are one of them. Under 30 seconds left now. Orangeburg Wilkinson pushing the pace. Driving in is Hughes. And she bumps into Hallie Campbell, number 12, the sophomore, who has checked in along with Camille Henry, the junior. So Faye Norris has inserted every single player of that roster into this state championship game. Rebound, put back is good for Morgan Williams, the freshman. Works her way into the box score here in the championship with five seconds left as the Dutch Fork fans count it down. There's the buzzer and there it is for the first time in school history. Your 2012 Class 4A girls state champs, the Silver Foxes of Dutch Fork High School, led by Donisha Schuler, the senior, going out a champion as they knock off Orangeburg Wilkinson. A big celebration on the floor, big 
game by Schuler. How about these Silver Foxes? 0-3 in the title game all time for Dutch Fork, but they have now captured the first state championship in school history, defeating Orangeburg Wilkinson tonight, capping off a terrific season. 27-3 for the Dutch Fork girls. Yeah, add the extra win for Dutch Fork, 27-3 to close out the 2011-2012 basketball season. They are your state champions as the trophy will head over to Dutch Fork for the first time in school history. And congratulations to Faye Norris. A big win for her as she gives a hug to Joshua Staley. Yeah, Josh Daly's young coach. I'm sure we'll see more of him and OW in the years to come. Stacy Huff, courtside with Faye Norris. Faye Norris, first ever championship in ladies basketball for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. Congratulations, coach. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about the ball game. I know it feels great. Talk about the game. Yeah, it's been an exciting week, but um, the game tonight, um, one thing that they did, they came out playing, and that was one thing I told them. If you come out playing, it's yours. So they stay focused on the task, so I thank them for that. You made history tonight. Congratulations again, Coach. Thank you. Victorious Coach Faye Norris for the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes' first ever championship in ladies basketball. Thanks so much, Stacey Huff. I said she was even keel. We're going to take a break. This is the SC HSL Network. This is number three. Randy Look at the Burkholder. flip pass. Here comes Lee. Lee, one on one. Fire scores. From the acute angle, David Frazier. Championship point, Del Toro. That's it, help us win. It is Sanders, Sanders pulling away, showing his speed. For all the best in South Carolina High School League championship action, both live and on demand, your destination is schsl.tv. We can get a player up here. Oh, that's good stuff. All right, perfect. Prepare a Wiley Ballard right. graphic. Do you want me to start the stream? We start the stream, camera three, beautiful. Oh, we're coming in on one. For more information on how your school can join the Play on School broadcast program and participate in the SCHSL network, go to schsl.tv slash SBP. One match away from immortality. This is a total team effort. And welcome back to the Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina on the SCHSL Network as the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes win the first state championship in school history, knocking off the Orangeburg Wilkinson Bruinettes. And you see the tears there on the sidelines for Orangeburg Wilkinson, but they will be lower state champions, and they're the only team that can say that. We, we do call this the weekend of champions for a reason, Birch. Everybody that makes it here is a champion. Orangeburg Wilkinson defeated Blythewood, West Ashley, Colleton County, and last week, Goose Creek at the Florence Civic Center to advance to the Colonial Life Arena for tonight's championship game. You mentioned earlier, only two teams in 4A girls basketball make it this far. About 50 schools in South Carolina uh, compete for the right to get here. Only two of them make it. So our hats off to these Lady Bruinettes from Orangeburg Wilkinson High School. Uh, obviously, it's frustrating when you come this far and you're not able to, to win the championship game, but no reason for anybody from OW to hang their heads. And Josh Daly, one of the top young girls coaches in South Carolina, uh, the future certainly appears very bright for him and for this OW basketball program. Yeah, congratulations, Orangeburg Wilkinson, for winning the lower state championship as they finish runners up losing this game here tonight in Columbia to the Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. As you see, the senior right there, Naila Jamison Myers, holding the runner-up trophy for Orangeburg Wilkinson. Yes. And, and, and what a career for the 6'4 senior. That's right, and she will continue to wear orange. She'll play at Clemson next year. All right, let's take a listen now 
As the public address announcer here at the Colonial Life Arena will introduce your 2012 special congratulations class to Orangeburg State 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 Wilkinson, the State runners-up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to direct your attention, presenting the awards, Superintendent Dr. Stephen Hefner, Principal Mr. Greg Morton, Athletic Director Tom Knox, Dutch Fork Silver Flocks. Number three, Camilla Henry. Number four, Zane Green. Number five, Kaira Daniels. Number 10, Rose Robinson. Number 11, Donisha Schuler. Number 12, Haley Campbell. Number 20, Shelby Curtis. Number 21, Tamara DeBar. Number 22, Sydney Scholl. Number 30, Kara Wigfall. Number 31, Alexis Frazier. Number 40, Morgan Williams. Number 41, Elena Coates. Number 42, Andre Sipes. Dutch Forks coach by Faye Norris. Congratulations to all trainers, managers, assistant coaches. Presenting the state championship trophy, the commissioner of the South Carolina High School League, Mr. Jerome Singleton. Dutch Fork Silver Foxes. Congratulations, Dutch Fork. They're your winners of the 2012 state championship. Stay with us. We've got much more from Columbia here on the SCHSL Network. <laughs> 